Wonderful. What if, though, your system is not 100% perfect? What if there's the possibility of a mistake being made, of sending the wrong signal? What if there's the possibility of noise in the communication system? And at some point, an individual who does a cooperative behavior, thanks to a glitch in the system, it is read as having been defect defection. So what happens as a result? This individual, forget it. OK, what happens as a result? The individual who cooperated but somehow the message got through as cheating. They don't know. Something got lost in the wires between them in translation. The other individual was saying, whoa, that individual cheated against me. I'm going to cheat in the next round. So along comes the next round, and that individual cheats against them, this one who's cooperating because they've been cooperating all along. They don't know about this error. And they say, whoa, that person just cheated against me. I'm going to cheat in the next round. So they cheat in the next round. This one says, whoa, they just cheated another time, again and again and again. And what you get is a seesaw pattern for the rest of time. You've just wiped out 50% of the cooperation. And what you've got is tit-for-tat strategies are vulnerable to signal error. That's something that soon came out in these studies of axelrods. And when I was a kid, there was like one of these like thriller books I remember reading where there's a glitch in the system. And at the time, the mean, scary Soviet Union launched a missile that, no, it was the United States. The United States, by accident, launched a missile, a nuclear weapon where they didn't mean to, some cockroach you know, chewed through a wire someplace or other. And the missile went off and wound up being destroying Moscow. And oh my god, we had a cooperative system of mutually sort of restraint of aggression, all of that. And thanks to a signal error, a cheating signal was accidentally sent off. And how did the book end? A tit for tat response in order to avoid sort of thermonuclear wasteland, the Soviet Union was allowed to destroy New York. All right. So that shows exactly how you could then get into a seesawing thing simply by way of if the system has any vulnerability to signal error. So it soon became clear, as soon as Axelrod began to introduce the possibility of signal errors, that tit for tat didn't work as well as another strategy, one that quickly came to the forefront. And that one, for some strange reason, that's the way it's shown. That one was called forgiving tit for tat. What happens with forgiving tit for tat? The usual rule, like tit for tat, if you cooperate, if they cooperate, you always cooperate. If they cheat against you, you punish them in the next round. Exactly same thing as tit for tat. But oh no, what if there's a signal error in the system and you've gotten caught in one of these horrible seesawing things? What forgiving tit for tat does is we'll have a rule, for example, that if we seesaw like this five times in a row, I will forego cheating the next time, and instead I'll cooperate. And that will get things back on track. I am willing to be forgiving in one round in order to reestablish cooperation after the signal error came in. And that one, as soon as you introduce the possibility of signal error, that one outcompetes tit for tat. Because it makes perfect sense. It's a great way of solving that problem. So that was terrific. Tit for tat with the ability to forgive. And what you would then see is variability. How many of these do you need to go through before you forgive? What's the optimal number of seesawings? All of that. So a whole world of optimizing how soon you are forgiving. Nonetheless, the general theme being forgiving tit for tat outcompetes tit for tat when you can have signal error. But there was a vulnerability. There is a vulnerability here to this one, which is you could be exploited. If you're playing against, for example, a tit for tatter or all sorts of other strategies where they don't have forgiving strings of defection, and you do, what's going to happen is you're going to keep going back to cooperating, and they're going to keep stabbing you in your back. Forgiving tit for tat is vulnerable to exploitation playing against individual players that don't have forgiveness in them. So what soon became apparent was an even better strategy, which is you start off 
with a tit-for-tat strategy, which is you are punitive, you are retaliatory amid being forgiving, clear, nice initially. You are willing to punish, and you cannot be exploited in this way. If and only if you have gone whatever number of rounds without the other individual ever cheating on you, if you've gone long enough without that happening, you switch over to forgiving tit for tat. What is that? That's deciding you trust somebody. You've had enough interactions with them that you are willing to trust them. This is the transition from pure rational optimizing to switching over. Forgiveness coming in there protects you from signal error. And of course, now a whole world of how many rounds do you need to do this before you switch that as to what the optimal deal with that is. But again, this is a way of transitioning to solve the problem of signal error, but forgiving too readily and being taken advantage of. Soon, another strategy appeared, which was called Pavlov. And those of you who know Pavlovian psychology will see that this, in fact, has nothing whatsoever to do with Pavlovian psychology, and I don't know why they did that, but they thought it was kind of cool. But the rule was, remember, if you stab the other guy in the back, you get a bunch of points. If you both cooperate, you get points, not as many. If you both cheat, you lose some points. If you're taken advantage of, you lose a lot of points. So two outcomes you gain, two outcomes you lose. In Pavlov, the simple rule is, when I do something, if I get points, if I get some degree of reward, I do it again the next time. If I get rewarded in either of the first two types of payoffs, I do the same thing again. And the other part, of course, is, and if I, have, if I play my strategy and I lose one of the two, bottom, the two bottom outcomes, I switch to the other strategy the next time. And what you see is that can establish very good tit-for-tat stuff. But if you sit and spend hours tonight with you know, a long roll of toilet paper and playing out all the rounds of it, you will see what Pavlov allows you to do is exploit somebody else who is forgiving. So Pavlov goes along just fine with this, and as long as Pavlov continues, whenever they switch over to a forgiving tit-for-tat, Pavlov will outcompete them because Pavlov exploits.